revival, I believe we'll just uh, make use of it. And uh, let's see. Yeah, here it is. I'm fixing the bar of that, and I'll be of yours, brother Jim. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to now. Amen. Turn to uh, the book of Luke, if you will, please. The book of Luke. Every Bible turn. You now, keep your seat. I didn't tell you to stand up. I know you do a whole lot of time. <laughs> but on this occasion, and I've heard the preacher do this sometimes because he's smart too. And uh, what do you mean? I mean, I've got so much scripture here to read that you'd be begging for the opportunity to sit that down before I finish reading this scripture. And so I'm going to show mercy on you. And besides, it, it, it's just what God wants tonight, but I want you, and He wants you to absorb it, sitting right there with no distraction other than just holding the Bible before you and seeing what God has to say, starting here about Ephesians chapter 5, if you will, please. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse 12. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. I did, did I, I said Luke at first, didn't I? Yeah. Well, well you, don't, you ought to stay steadfast for you first. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But I'm so excited, I'll tell you. I, I, I can't always hear me preach. <laughs> I didn't enjoy what I have with you. You just say you about that Bible from me sometimes. <laughs> Amen. All right, it is Luke chapter 5. That's what it is. Verse 12. Luke chapter 5. All right. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And put forth his hand, and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately <coughs> the leprosy departed from him. You believe that? Amen. Amen. What are you, Bible believers or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, drop down here and see if you believe this. Verse 18 and following. Verse 18, same chapter. And the whole men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with the palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he, Jesus, saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins be forgiven or forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their faults, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. In other words, if I was going to deceive you, would I tell you that, would I tell you that something happened on the inside, or would I show you something on the outside? Then he declares, Verse 24. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. In other words, so you'll know I can do what I did do. He said then to the city of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy captain and go to thine house. And immediately he rose up before them and took two aspirins and fell for... No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not what it said. No, it says he took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Yes. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Yes. You believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I sure do. I believe the record God gave here is just as accurate as a record could be. Look at chapter 7, please. Chapter 7, verse 11. 7 11. <laughs> 7-11. That might remind you to pick up a loaf of bread on the way home. Yeah. 
Yeah. Luke 7, verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bear, that which we call a coffin. And they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up. <laughs> That's really unusual. And began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother, and there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. And that God hath visited his people, and this room of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region around about. Anybody here believe that? Yes. Amen. I sure do, or you're impressing me that you're a Bible believer. Well, let's see, uh, let's look down here to uh, chapter. Uh, uh, well, it's all so good, I just hope you miss any of it. But I'm going to chapter 8. And verse 26. Chapter 8 and verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes. Now you know the problem, folks, that don't wear their clothes. they got devils. Some of them have them a long time. Neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice he said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he, Jesus, had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for often time. It had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the band and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Because many devils were entering into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered or permitted them to do so. He suffered them. Then with the devils out of the man entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake. And were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told him by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Isn't that good? Yes. Amen. Isn't that good? Aren't you glad you're not still standing up while I'm turning to another one? Okay, look at chapter uh, chapter 9, verse 12. Chapter 9, verse 12. Same book of Luke. Chapter 9, verse 12. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve and said unto him, Send them up to the way that they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victuals, for we are here in a desert place. But it said unto them, Get ye them to eat. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all this people. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down by fifties in a company. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat. And we're all filled, and there was taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets. Now, I guess this stumps you. Anybody here believe that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You do. Well, you're mighty quiet about it. Amen. I believe it. Amen, I believe it. Verse 28, if you will. Let's see now. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I want to get over a little further than that. I do, I do, I do. Let me, uh, let me see where I want to go. Now I see, I see, I see. I believe I'm just, I 
journey on over here and find uh, about, how about, let's try chapter 18, I believe. Right now we, we may revert back and get some of the others, but chapter 18 will be sufficient for right now, and I'm too glad you're not still standing. All right, Luke chapter 18, verse 35. And it came to pass that as he was coming down to Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace, but he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him, and when he was come near, he asked, asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave, glory, gave praise unto God. Yes, amen. amen. My Lord God, I do thank you for your scriptures. They are wonderful, they are wonderful, and they never grow old. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes when I read these scriptures and there's such a mum and a quietness in a congregation, I wonder if we have maybe heard and heard and heard until we are bored with hearing and we are so familiar that the Word of God has become so familiar we just cannot shout, Amen! Amen! But it is still fresh in my soul tonight what you did for me and what you did for these. Help us never to think, well, this is just ordinary no, it's so far above ordinary. And help us, oh God, to give you credit that on this earth, in your earthly ministry, you did what no else could do or no one else would do. Thank you, Lord, for coming and visiting the world unto them. But thank you that you have visited unto us. And I pray you will visit unto us tonight through the rest of the scriptures who we might read and work thy will in this place, oh God. You know my frame, you know my age, you know my limitations, you know my weaknesses, and I pray that for thy glory, you'll give me fresh unction and help me, Lord, to remember and not to forget and to uh, not stagger and stammer, but, oh, God, help me to go through the truth that you would have for this congregation. And, Lord, may the Word of God have its wonderful work in every heart that is yes. present, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, now, your pastor could, and I believe I could with a little more study and preparation, take any one of these situations and preach about an hour and a half to three hours on them because there's a lot of good detail in there, you know? In fact, some of you, as we read, you might have saw in your heart said, I hope you'll stop there and just really develop it because it's just so good, so good, so it's sort of like going to your dessert table over here and you're some of you, I know you know how to do it. Uh, you get what you want, but you hate to pass by anything else because you want it all. And, uh, so it is with these good stories that we read here, but uh, that's not my chief text tonight. We're going to go instead to chapter 19 of Luke. Luke chapter 19. Notice how handily it follows chapter 18. Chapter 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, we've been told, and not altogether by men, that God's Word is inspired by the Holy Ghost. I've been told with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. That very same fact. And yet there's some things that when you read, there seems to be a discrepancy or an error or a problem that is very difficult for a human mind to really wrap around and digest and take it in. And this is one of those strange statements. Look again. Verse 2. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Okay, that's a little strange. I don't know a lot of people named Zacchaeus. But it says he was the chief among the publicans. 
You know what a publican is? Sure, I'll sit with Democrat and all that kind of thing. <laughs> You've been hearing too many advertisements of politics. No, a publican is a, a collector of revenue, a tax collector. I visited Brother Webster, 1828, and he had an interesting description of a publican. He said it's a farmer of revenues. <laughs> That's what he called it. Yeah. That is, uh, you know, a farmer, he, he goes out to collect his crops and bring it in and get it all together and and that's what a publican is. He's a man who has 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 desire to get all the taxes he can get. Yes, sir. Yeah. But wait a minute. He didn't say Zacchaeus was a publican. It says two things about it. He was rich and was the chief among the publicans. Now, that's part of how he got rich. He had been elevated and promoted in his ability to extract money from people and get their do re -me. I mean, he was so good at bringing in the taxes until he had brought himself up to become not a, just a nominal go out in the field and get taxes from people, but he was the chief, that is, he was the CEO, he was the, he was the executive, the, the officer in charge of the tax department. That is, he had sub-publicans under his offices as the chief. You know, every Indian is not a chief, just the chief Indians are the chief. Yeah. The rest of them are Indians. <laughs> and every publican is not a chief. Have you ever visited Zacchaeus' office? I mean, a man that is rich and he's got the highest elevated job in his line of work of anybody in that line of work. Why, you're not going to find anything but the very best in his office. Come on, walk on in. Come on in. Look at it. Look, look, look at that plush chair and that plush chair and and look at that carpet, man, a lot your ankle deep in that 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 soft plush car. I mean, in Zacchaeus' office. Do you think he just had a linoleum rug? <laughs> Do you think he just had a kitchen straight back chair? No, he's the chief among the publicans and he flaunts it. He lets you know. I am the biggest duck on the pond in this tax collecting business. And so He's now down to the time where he's got to see about getting some extra taxes in. But wait a minute. I'm going to read that other little line, verse 3. And he, Zacchaeus, he, publican, he, chief among the publicans, he, rich chief, he, sought to see Jesus, who he was. <laughs> now, do you see any human conflict going on there? I mean, you've been saved, uh, I don't know, about 30 years old? How many? Can you count them on one hand? You've got to use both hands to count how many times. A CEO, corporate office official, and, or, or some high official, Chief in his category and very rich. How many times has the phone rung at 2.30 in the morning and they said, I just had to call you because I just got to find out about this Jesus man I've been hearing about and I just, I just haven't had anybody that I've felt and somebody said you can point me to him. How many times have you been disturbed with a man like that? Zero. Zero? Okay, rest of you that have been disturbed by a rich Elevated, high official officer of some great service of public service. How many of you have ever had a rich man meet a path to your door to beg? I want to see Jesus. I want to know him. I want to see who he is. How many? Raise your lying hand if you want to. No? That is not a familiar scene, is it, sir? No, sir. Now, there's something going on that's not spelled out in detail in this book. 
He sought to see Jesus who he was. Going to his office at the close of the payment day, when all the property taxes are supposed to be in, and go into his office as he sits there waiting for his deputy. You see, Zacchaeus don't do any collecting hardly at all. It's got to be a severe problem before he'll mount his horse and go out to collect. But he's got a deputy who's working the job trying to work himself up and elevate himself so if Zacchaeus ever kicks the bucket, he can step in and be rich. So the deputy comes in right on time, punches the clock, and says, Zacchaeus, I'm right here ready to go to work. Zacchaeus says, I'm glad you are because there's several people around here that have not paid their taxes. And yesterday was the final day to have them paid. You know the law has recently changed. That they either have their taxes paid by yesterday or we make a 30-day effort to collect those taxes, delinquent taxes. And if we can't get that tax money from them in 30 days, <laughs> you want to know my deputy how I got so rich what we do we serve papers on them that they have to relinquish their house and move out and we'll sell their house at auction and the tax comes to the tax department or the sale price comes to the tax department and we get the property and we get the profits and that's how we get rich is by forcing people to pay who can't pay by taking their property. So Zacchaeus says to the deputy, it's your time, buddy. It's your time. I want you to go to uh, that horse outside, saddle's already on him. And I want you to get on that horse and I want you to ride. In fact, let me go to my files. I, 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 I've got it already listed here. I've got it already listed where you're to go. By the way, can you get a shot of that by any chance? Real close? Yes, sir. Can you read it? Internal Revenue Tax Department. You can read it, can you? I can see the other side, too. Can't quite see it. What is that? Internal, internal Revenue Tax Department. Not internal. Oh, I'm revenue. sorry. I Infernal Revenue Infernal. Tax Okay, department. sorry. <laughs> there is a difference. Okay. <laughs> Good enough, though. Okay. But he has his folder, and he has his information here, and it says to his deputy, he says, now let me tell you what you got to face out there. First of all, there's Mr. Alden. He's three years behind. Three years behind on his taxes. But since the law's been pasted now, we passed it, we can now take his property if we don't pay. You go tell Mr. Orrin you want that money. If you don't get that money in 30 days, yeah. he's going to lose his house. Yeah. Then I've got here Mr. Bennett. Four years behind that sorry scoundrel trying to. He's a dead beater. And Mr. Bennett, four years behind, you go tell him that we're going to take his property yeah. in 30 days if he don't have yeah. the money paid for that. Then I've got here, let's see, yeah, Mrs. Clark. I understand she is a widow woman, but uh, the fact is, she's going to have to come up with it from her relatives or somewhere because she's two years behind. And then there's Mr. Edwards, he's two years behind. And then there's uh, Mrs. Jones, she's three years behind. And, oh, man. Daddy, you got your work cut out. Here's a man that has never paid taxes on his property. Never! You get that due money or tell him he's going to be put out in the streets, homeless, no place to live. The deputy says, Zacchaeus, you can depend on me. I came to work today to do my bidding and you give me that list and I will come back. And Zacchaeus said, all right. I'm going to, while you're going, I'm going to clean my desk off of everything on the desk so when you get back, we can spread all the money out on my desk and we can count it and we can divide it. I'm going to give you a raise if you do a good job. And if you don't do a good job, you might have to look for another job when you get back. Oh, the deputy said, you can count on me. You can count on me. 
And so he goes out to the horse. And he gets on his horse and he says, Now, first of all, I'm supposed to see Mr. Audrey. So, whoa, big fella. He rides his horse over to Mr. Audrey's house. But wait a minute. As he gets close to the house, he sees a big bold sign out on the front of the house. And here he is facing a dilemma he hadn't expected. For on the big sign it says, Notice, <coughs> a leper dwells here. That would not be wise for him to just get up on the porch and go knock on the door and face Mr. Horry, let him breathe on him a time or two. No, no, leprosy is a contagious disease. And so when he sees that sign, he backs off a little bit, and it was sometime customary. He picks up a pretty good sized rock and he chunks it up there on the porch. <laughs> that rock bounces around on the porch till it rams up against the doorway. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, a man comes to the door. That's a signal somebody out here knocking on your door. It ain't going to come as close as the door is knocking. And so Mr. Alred comes and says, I'm a leper, I'm a leper, unclean, unclean. And this deputy said, I see your sign. I see your sign. I understand you're unclean. But the fact is, even unclean people have to pay their taxes. And here the report is that you're two, three, three years behind on paying taxes. He said, that's when I got leprosy. And of course, when I got leprosy, I couldn't go into the crowd. I couldn't go into the public. I couldn't go among people and work a job. So I've not been able to get any money. And I just live here by the kindness of people who will come and place some foods and some groceries out in the yard and after they leave I go and bring it in but he says I live at the mercy of the community I have no money to pay taxes he said well I'm going to tell you something Mr. Alden you may think that's an excuse but Zacchaeus doesn't yeah. accept excuses and you know the new law that demands taxes be paid in 30 days or this house that you live in, you know, it can be sanitized and fumigated and cleaned up and can be, and you'll lose your house. You'll have to go to a leper colony if you don't come up with the money. Oh, please, please. I can't pay it, but I need my help. I need a place to live. He says, sorry, sir, but I have done my duty. I've told you what the law demands, and if you don't have it paid in 30 days, Zacchaeus himself will come to the paper where you'll have to sign over your house to the tax department. Good day, sir. And he rides on. And he goes toward Mr. Bennett's house. Mr. Bennett, four years behind. He goes to the house. It looks sort of vacated, but not entirely. And so he goes up and knocks on the door. And a voice inside says, yeah. come in, come in. He says, uh, all right, just walk in. He said, yes, I can't come out. You can't? No, I can't come out. Just <clears throat> come on through the door, down the hall to the first door. Come on in the bedroom. I'm laying in the bed in here. So he walks in, says, Mr. Bennett, what's your problem? He said, my problem is palsy. Yeah. I've got palsy so bad, I'm just totally crippled with it. I can't do anything. Can't even get off my bed. Sit in my own chores around the house. Said, I'm just doomed to die right here. He said, Mr. Bennett, you've got more problems than that because I'm from the tax department. I come to collect the overdue taxes. And if I don't get the money today, you have 30 days to get that money together or else Zacchaeus is coming to make you sign over your property and you won't even have a bed to lay in. You'll be sleeping on the park bench or the streets, palsy and all. He said, don't be so hard-hearted, Mr. Taxman. He said, well, I just have to abide by the law, just abide by the law. And the law says, you got to pay taxes like everybody else. And Mr. Bennett said, no, please have mercy. Mercy is not in my department, sir. And so he drives off. Now he's going on over the hill. And this time, 
he's going to miss his part. And so, as he approaches, I mean about a quarter of a mile away, he sees a big crowd around what should be Mrs. Clark's home. It should be right there. But my, what a crowd. You're even having an auction of all of our goods. You're even, maybe she died. And that's an auction. People going to bid on stuff. Her, her belongings, her property. Or, or, or is this a yard sale? And everybody's gathered there. What? So he gets a little closer and a little closer. And then he sees a funeral train coming out and a lot of people walking along in single file going yeah. toward the graveyard yeah. with a coffin and right behind the coffin is a little woman just crying her heart out yeah. and there they go and the deputy said I've got to get this message to her because not fair that she don't know she's only got 30 days or she's not going to lose whoever's in the coffin but she's going to lose her house so he finds a respectable looking man at a good distance from the coffin where he wouldn't really throw any cold water on her in her funeral train. And he says, uh, excuse me, but uh, who's in the box? The man says, that's this lady's son. Her son? Yeah, that's her son. You see, that lady is a widow lady. And as you know, we haven't come in the years yet where widow ladies can get jobs driving trucks and holding up stop signs out on the highway while they're doing uh, road work. And, I mean, you know, women, women can't do that kind of work yet. So, so actually, that son was her only survival. That son was working to keep body and soul together for his mama, Mrs. Carr. But that son is dead in the box. The deputy said, well, this is not the time to drop this on her, but she's got to know. Are you a good friend of hers? He said, well, I'm very close when it comes to wanting to do something for her. He said, you're the man I'm glad I'm talking with because you've got to do something for this woman. You've got to tell her, 30 days or else. What do you mean, 30 days? This two years behind on taxes is not going to survive. She'll either have the tax money or else she will lose her home. Not only her son, but lose her home. He said, well, I hate to drop that in on her right after the burial of her son, but there they go. And, and, and if it must be done, I guess I'm the one to do it because I don't want to catch her blindsided. And he said, well, you tell her that from the tax department, they came a deputy that told you that it must be done. Tell her to get that money somehow. Well, she don't have nobody to work and earn it now. It's your responsibility. He got on his horse and he begins to ride off. I'll go see if I can get anything from Mr. Edwards. So he goes to the Edwards house. And when he gets to the Edwards house, <laughs> he hopes to see Mr. Edwards. So he knocks on the door. And some little children some little children said, Oh, mama, 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 somebody at the door. I hope it ain't daddy. I hope it ain't daddy. He listens. Little children hope their daddy didn't come home. Yeah. No. She comes to the door and he says, Are you Miss Edwards? I sure am. Well, where's Mr. Edwards? He said, Well, you wouldn't want to see him if you could. He's not doing anything. Why? Well, actually he's about a mile over yonder in the woods through that little old trail that leads to a big cemetery. And he's up there in the cemetery screaming and crying and naked and running wild and cutting himself. Yeah. You wouldn't want to see him, said but. He had taken so much dope and liquor and one thing or another until the devil took over and he beat his kids and he abused me and he finally got so wild nobody could tame him. I called him on one and they tried to chain him and hold him and keep him but he's gone wild and it can't be helped. He can't be helped. He said, well, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a psychologist, and I'm not a psychiatrist, and I'm not here to deal with that. But I'll have to tell you, Ms. Edwards, if I can't tell Mr. Edwards, 
You've got a pretty good looking house here, but you're not going to even have this for those children and yourself. If the tax money on this property is not got up and brought to the tax department or paid in 30 days, said you don't even have to bring it because Zach is himself going to come with the paperwork and going to sign this property over to the tax department and the law provides that for them. Now, Ms. Edwards, the choice is yours. She begins to cry. The kids begin to scream. Where are you going, Mama? Where are you going to live? He says, that's your problem. I've got enough of my own. But I've given you the message and you better heed it. Taxes got to be paid. He didn't know that area was so filled with needy people that had problems. But did you know every area is full of people that's got problems? Yes, sir. Yep. And every area has needy people that have problems. And they need a fix. Well, I'll go see Mrs. Jones. I understand, as Zachary said to me, that she is a widow woman. So I don't need to look for a man at that house. So I'll just go to Mrs. Jones' house and as he approaches. One, two, three, four. Little children from uh, about four years old to eight years old, and they're just as skinny as a rail. I mean, bony, just shuffling across the yard with very little energy and whimpering with their skeletal frame showing through the skin. And they said, Mister, did you bring us something to eat? We're so hungry. He said, no, kids, I didn't bring you nothing to eat. I'm from the tax department, and I'm just here to see Mrs. Jones about a tax matter. I didn't come to deliver any groceries. They said, well, Mr. we don't have nothing to eat. He said, is your mama here? Yes, yeah, she's here. Go on up and knock on the door. So he did. And she came to the door. And when Mrs. Jones came to the door, she was just... She could just about stand under a clothesline on a rainy day and not get wet. I mean, she was thin. You get the picture. And she shuffled her bones right on up to the door and said, Yes, sir, what can I do for you? He said, Well, I'm from the tax department. It looks like maybe you can't do much for me because I came to collect the taxes that are overdue. She said, well, since my husband died, I haven't had any way of getting income. I'm just down to the last. In fact, come on in. Come on in, Mr. Deputy. So he stepped inside and he looked and the living room was not furnished with anything except crates and a barrel. He looked in another room and instead of beds, there were just rags laying on the floor where they sleep. She said, come on back in the kitchen, if you will. It's the only place we still got two chairs. She had sold all her furniture to get something to eat, and they've been setting it down, setting it down, setting it down, so they could eat and survive. He walked back in the kitchen, and all the cabinet doors were open, and just as bare, not a thing in the house. And so he looked around, and he said, Woman, you're in, you're in a very critical condition here with nothing to eat. She said, I'd offer you something if we had something, but we don't have anything. Don't have, I have nothing here that I can feed you, offer you. But, 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 but uh, there has been a neighbor that said they're going to bring us a little bit of their leftovers if I just wait. He said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, Miss Jones, but your taxes delinquent like that, you're going to have to pay it. Or Zach is going to come and take this house away from you, and you and your children will be without a home. She said, well, if it's over a week, he might better bring a broom because I think he'd just have to sweep our bony bones out of this house. We ain't going to live or survive another month. Well, he said, well, you got 30 days to get the money together. If there's any way you can beg, borrow, I wouldn't say steal, but any way you can get it. She said, well, we're just tired of trying to make it where there is no way. So I guess you just have to let him come on. But you know, this deputy, real <coughs> human being, just a human being, he did have a place in his heart that it's just not a good job. <laughs> Would you like to have a job like this, extracting money from people that don't have it and have no way to get it? No. So there he was. He said, Mrs. Jones, I've got to tell you that 
these children and yourself better be somehow talking to relatives or something about a place to live if you don't get that money together because Zacchaeus will take your house legally. By law, he's got a right to do that. Good day, ma'am. He gets on his horse. And he rides off. And he rides off. He almost hit a tree there. But as he rides off, he just straight to them and kept going. As he rides off, he says, I'm going to give one more opportunity for somebody to give me some tax money or I'm going to I just can't keep doing this. It's going to bother my sleep tonight. I can't sleep tonight after making all this round. And so he says, I'm going to see Mr. Price. There's no excuse that a man would never pay his taxes. Never pay his taxes. Mr. Price, you got a hard boy <coughs> coming to talk to you about that now. So he arrived till he gets over near Jericho. And he doesn't have the exact address. <coughs> but he knows about where he lives. And so he seeks to find and he asks, you know where Mr. Price lives? <coughs> I know where one's got a little, little cottage house, but he don't do much living there. Is that uh, Mr. Price? Is the only one I know of. Well, where is it? Well, little house is just outside the city of Jericho, but you'll find him down there where the people are running up and down the streets doing their business. Because, you see, that's where he always sits. Sits? Yeah. See, he was born blind. And his daddy left him a little cottage house to live in. But when his daddy died, Mr. Price had no way of making a living except to go out on the street and hold a little tin cup and wait for people to drop in and nickels and dimes and quarters. And said, if you want to see him, you'll either have to go to the house and hope he's there or go down there. I think you'll find him right down there on the streets where the people are coming by. So he goes down and he sees a man sitting there with a little tin cup. And so to sort of break the ice, he reaches in and he got a two quarters and a nickel and he says, well, I may never see him again. He can't see me. So he won't know that it's not the quarter. I'll just drop a nickel in his tin cup. And that'll at least make him think I'm his friend. So he drops it and he went, click him. And the blind man said, oh, thank you. Thank you, whoever it is that dropped that coin in my cup. I appreciate that. And so this deputy said, Mr. Price, you really appreciate me doing that? He said, yes, yes. You're the one who dropped it? Yeah. Well, Mr. Price, a good deed ought to be returned with another good deed. Would you do me a favor? Oh, if I can, if I can, but there's so little I can do. What do you want me to do for you, mister? He said, I've given you a little token of my help for you. And you could help me a lot if you'd just tell me if you know anybody around here named Price. He said, my name is Price. He said, you're Mr. Price? Yes, I'm Mr. Price, the only one in this area. He said, since my daddy died, I'm the only Mr. Price around here. He said, well, Mr. Price, I'm glad I found you, but I'm sorry I come back with bad news because you've never paid taxes and your daddy didn't pay taxes on this property. And now the law has been passed that you've got to either pay taxes on the property in 30 days or you're going to lose a little house. He said, my daddy, in his will, he said, that's my property. You can't take my property. He said, Zacchaeus will take that property if you can't get your taxes paid in 30 days. You can't just hope for money. You've got to shake that cup, boy. You've got to make it noisy so people will know you're desperate to get some help. Because you've got to have your taxes paid in 30 days or you're going to lose the house that you live in. And them blinded eyes begin to well up with tears coming down them old cheeks. And he said, please, sir, have mercy on the blind man. You know there's nothing I can do, but I'm at the mercy of the crowd. He said, mercy, Mr. Percy. I can't do nothing about mercy, but I will tell you what I can do. I can go back and tell Zacchaeus I didn't get the money and then it's between you and Zacchaeus. But he will be back. You better have that money. Well, you know the story.
He rode that old nag, he rode that old horse. Oh, I done lost it. Lost the, the thing. I'm telling you, these horses are not the devil. Excuse me just a minute. That's a sick winnie, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. What a sick horse. He's going to be in the tax collection job. Amen. So, he goes back to the Infernal Revenue Department. Infernal, Infernal Revenue Department. You see that? He goes back to the Infernal Revenue Department. And he walks in and wipes the tears up. He stumbles. <laughs> Didn't have so much belly I could get it. Oh. So he walks in. And when he walks in, Zachary said, All right, the desk is cleared off. Bring that money over here, boy. Let's count it. He said, Zachary, I don't have any money. Don't have any money? Don't tell me you collected the money and then lost it in a poker game. No, 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 no. Don't tell me you collected the money and then wasted it somewhere on uh, whatever it was. He said, No, sir. He said, in fact, I'm a nickel short from what I left here with. Gave it to a blind man. He said, what do you mean you don't have any money? He said, Zacchaeus, you wouldn't believe the conditions I found people all over this area. And the reasons that they have, not excuses, but the reasons they have that they can't pay the taxes. Zacchaeus, I don't have the money and I'm not really sorry that I don't because those people don't have it to give. Zachary smiled and said, Well, so much the more for me. Because if they don't think, didn't you tell them? I told them, just like you said, that if they don't get it in 30 days, you'll come by and take their property. Zachary said, Well, good enough, good enough, good enough. But you are a sorry tax collector. I'm a good mind to fire you, boy. That deputy said, Zacchaeus, <laughs> you may be chief of the publicans, but you can't fire me. Zacchaeus bristled and said, uh, said, what do you mean I can't fire you? I can fire you too. No, you can't. Try it. You can't fire me. Zacchaeus said, why can't I fire you? He said, because I quit just before I come in the door. <laughs> you can't yeah. fire me and don't work for you. And I quit. I wouldn't have he said, you'll never be rich like me. He said, if I have to get rich to be like you to be rich, I don't want to be rich. Amen. Zacchaeus, this is cruel, cruel. Zacchaeus said, well, if you gave him the message, that's all I need to know. Did you make any notes in your book? He said, yes, I made notes. That Mr. Allred, he's a, he's a leper. And Mr. Bennett, he's a cripple with palsy. And Mrs. Clark, she had a son that died and they're taking him out to bury him. Mr. Edwards, he, he, he's, he's uh, insane. He left home in a mad rage and he, he's, he's crazy, full of the devil. And, and Mrs. Jones, she's a widow woman with children that can't be fed. They're starving to death. And Mr. Price, he's a blind man, said, yeah, I made notes. You can take the notes and you can find where they are and you can do what you will. But I'm gone. Good day. So off he goes. Zacchaeus marks the calendar. Day by day, day by day, day by day, 21, 20, 20, 18, 17, 14. He gets down to three, two, one. He says, tomorrow I get to ride old, uh, yeah, get to ride old, uh, old, uh, uh, Let's see, what is his name? I forgot that horse's name. <laughs> Get the right old uh, Oh, come on, man. You know that horse. Good as it good as you. You know your own. Get anyhow, Get the right old Ride him tomorrow and go collect the taxes. So, he takes the book. He gets on his horse. He starts out. Well, now I see Mr. Orrid, the leper. <laughs> 
How are we to sanitize and clean up that house and send him to the leper colony and that's his problem? And I can make good profit on selling that house. So he goes to Mr. Aldrich's house. And as he would suppose, he stalks way out from the house to protect his own health. But he looks and he sees no warning sign. And as was the custom by many, he picked up a rock and he throws it up on the porch. And that rock bounces around until it stops right about the door. And the man comes to the door and says, How are you, sir? Come on up. Let's talk. He said, No, you're not going to suck me in on this problem. I understand. I know what your problem is. He said, Problem? He said, Man, I don't have a problem. I have nothing but good in my life. He said, oh, I got it right here in black and white, written down, you're a leper. So he said, Zachary, stand right there if you'd rather. And he pulls off his coat, pulls off his shirt, bares his chest, holds his arms up, says, how does that look? Zachary says, I see no sign of leprosy on your arms. No sign of leprosy on your chest. I see no sign of leprosy. He said, that's because I'm not a leper. Said you mean my deputy lied about you? He said you were a leper. He said he told you the truth, Zacchaeus. But you say you're not a leper. He, I'm telling you the truth, Zacchaeus. <laughs> well, I know that leprosy is not curable. He said, well, not unless Jesus passes by. Amen. 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 But said you know, when that deputy left, said I was so so distraught, I went into my bedroom and knelt by my bed on my leprous bony knees and I said, oh God, I can't pay taxes without some money and I can't get money without my leprosy being healed. But there's no chance that you would do that from heaven for me. And about that time he said, I heard a little rock hit my porch. And said, so I went out and a little boy was standing out in the yard and grinning and said, I throw that rock at your porch. He said, what do you do that for, boy? He said, look, there's a note tied to it. And he says, I opened that little note on that rock. And he said, you might want to know that Jesus of Nazareth passeth this way. Yeah. And I thought, that must be God's answer to my prayer. Amen. Amen. And he said, yeah. that little note invited me to stand and look for a crowd to come and say it wasn't long till I heard a lots of shouting and praising God and a lot of noise and a big crowd coming up the pathway. And I said, that must be them. That must be. And from my porch I could look down and I said, that must be him. That must be him. And said, so I knew I shouldn't. I knew I would never would find legal reason to do so because it's unlawful. But I just darted into that crowd and I pushed them this way and that way and pushed my way through until finally I came right before the man they were all cheering and I fell before him and I said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Yep. And he said, yeah. I will. Thy faith has saved thee. Be thou clean. Amen. And he said, Zacchaeus, I want to tell you, Instantly. I didn't have to rub it with salves and creams and all of that junk. Yeah. Yeah. Said instantly. Yeah. My yeah. leprosy was totally taken away. Yeah. And Zacchaeus, for your information, in case you were thinking about getting a good house today, I've had a little money to fix this house up a little bit since I'm going to stay here. He said, no, you're not because we got to have the tax money. He said, I've got that. You see, I've got a job, and the boss man was so cooperative knowing what Jesus had done till he advanced me some money. And Zacchaeus said, where do you work, man? Where do you work? He said, well, I've got two jobs. First, I work in the butcher shop, cutting up meat for people's tables. You know, beef and pork and so forth. I'm, I'm a meat cutter. He said, you were a leper, now you cut meat that people take and eat? He said, yeah, yeah, and not only that, I'm also hired as an inspector to meat market where they sell the meat to the butchers and cut it up. And he said, I have the most sanitary skin in the world. 
Because when Jesus heals, yes. he does Amen. 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 So he said, Zacchaeus, stand up here a little closer and I'll peel off the bills. Zacchaeus said, as he looked around, this sure would have been a good house to take. I sure couldn't get a good profit for that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. So Mr. Aldred pays the tax check. And Zacchaeus said, well, pull my brain. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna ride off down here, see what I can get from Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett, four years behind, bed fast, in bed, crippled with a palsy. So <laughs> He goes to his house and he knocks on the door. And Mr. Bennett comes to the door. And uh, he's uh, uh, not trembling like a palsy victim would, you know. No, he's not at all shaky. Just as sturdy as can be. And Zachary says, I'm here to see Mr. Bennett. I guess he moved out before I came to collect the house. <coughs> because I see you have no palsy problem. He said, oh, I had a palsy problem. But look, Zacchaeus, you can't see any movement. I'm just as sturdy as sturdy to me. He said, who is your doctor? He said, the great physician. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Zacchaeus said, what do you mean? He said, well, when your deputy came by and told me I had to get the money together, I knew I had to have a job. And I knew to have a job, I had to have something that I could do with my palsy in hands unless. And he said, while I was laying on the bed praying, said four men came to my house. Yeah. They came in. They said, Mr. Bennett? Yes, sir. Uh, go to church with us. He said, fellas, it's not time to joke. You know I'm a palsy victim. I can't get off this bed. They said, we didn't ask you to get off your bed. We just asked you to go to church with us. He said, well, I've got to get off the bed and go to church. He said, no, get a good grip on the bed rails. We're going to take you bed and all. Yeah. He said, those four men grabbed the bed post and grabbed the bed out the door, across the hills and hollows and up the next hills and over there to where a big crowd was gathered. And I said, where are we going, fellas? He said, we're going to hear the great master teach the word of God. Yeah. And said they took me and started up the front steps to go in the house, but the crowd was so great they couldn't get me in. And they said, Mr. Bennett, how you doing on that bed? He said, well, I'm hanging on for dear life. They said, get a better grip because you're fixing to go up, 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 up. Yeah. And he said, what do you mean? They got two ladders. Two men went up on these this ladder, two went up on this ladder, each one holding part of the bed so it wouldn't roll me off. And so they went up and got up on the roof, up on the rooftop, click, 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 down through the chimney, down through the roof, like old, I say, anyhow. He said, them fellas, let me down through the roof. And said, when they let me down on those ropes, boop, said that bed hit the floor, and I looked up, and the most beautiful face I've ever seen. A man that had such a tender, compassionate look, I couldn't get over his look. And said, the crowd was around just looking at everything he would do and every word he would say. And said, he looked at me and he said, because of them, their faith, I said to you, thy sins are forgiven you. Amen. Amen. He said, a surge of cleanliness, a surge of guiltlessness, a surge of peace yes. hit my soul yes. and yes. put me at ease that yes. nothing this man can do that would be wrong. Yeah. Yep. Everything <coughs> he's going to do, I'm going to submit to it. Yes. And said, all of a sudden, some of them began to quarrel back and forth. Said, hey, who, who can forgive sin but God alone? So I listened to him as I argued a little bit, and he said, okay, fellas, which would you believe? Some that had an internal sin's forgiven, but you can't see it. Or some external that you can't doubt it. And they just sort of stood there, dumbfounded, like, I don't know how to answer that. He said, all right. He said to me, Mr. Bennett, he said, Mr. Bennett, 
take up your bed and uh, walk. Take up your bed. And said, you know, when we got to the house, I had my back on the bed. And the folks wouldn't move and let me in. They begged, but they wouldn't make no entrance for me. But so when I come through the roof, my sins were forgiven. And then he said, take up your bed. He said, when I throw that bed on my back, and they all knew I was a victim that couldn't get off the bed themselves. He said, boy, they made room for me to get out. And they parted. They said, we've seen strange things today. <laughs> this is strange. And said, I want you to know, Zacchaeus, when this Jesus healed me from my palsy, I went down to the garment factory where they have those needles running continuously sewing garments and said a lot of people just don't have nerve steady enough to thread those little fine odd needles. So they hired me because I could boop, hit them needle holes. Boop. I could hit the eye of the needle every time. Just perfect. Didn't have to just hunt it, you know, because my pulse is smoother than castor oil. I mean, it is smooth. What do you think? Jesus does a rough job. He fixes it. And he said, not only that. I also uh, have other jobs that other men can't have because I have no nerve problems whatsoever. He said, so I've made enough money. I've got the money to pay the taxes. So Zacchaeus steps on his old trusty steed and he rides off to see Mrs. Clark. Uh-oh. Son was sick. Sick for two years. That's why they got behind on the taxes. And then he died. Carrying him out in the coffin. He said, well, I'll try to give her some condolences. I'll go up to the house and I'll tell her how sorry I am she lost her son. So he goes to Mrs. Clark's house and knocks on the door. She comes to the door. He said, Mrs. Clark, I'm a little late maybe to come by and tell you, but I'm so sorry about your son. She said, yes, that certainly was a bad situation. That was a sad ordeal. He was sick for two years, you know. She said, and who are you? He said, I'm Zach, it's from the tax department. But I understand that you've had some real hard times. But still, you understand we've got to abide by the law. Did my deputy come by? He, she said, yeah, but I didn't get to see him. But he told one of the fellows, and the fellow told me that you're going to be coming by in about 30 days, and that you'd come to get my house if I didn't have the money. He said, as he listened, he he heard a clicking noise around the back of the house. And he said, you got somebody trying to get your attention back there? And she said, no, 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 no. He said, that's just cutting wood being cut back there. He said, got some wood being cut. And he said, well, back to the subject. I understand that you lost your son and and he was sick for two years. And that's sad enough. But then to have him to die. And said, that, that's real sad. And I'm so sorry to hear about that. And she said, yeah, but said, it, 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 it's okay. It's okay. She, he said, it can't be okay. You're a little woman. Lose your only son. I said, yeah, but he's feeling much better now. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what, what, yeah. he, he said, what, what do you mean feeling much better? She said, well, Really hadn't been sick a day in his life since he's living again. He said, what? He said, yeah, that's him around the backyard cutting wood right now. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> said, that's the way yeah. he earns his money so we can pay the tax Amen. Day. And that's what he said. said, in fact, ever since he died, he has been feeling better than he ever did while he lived. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> he said, in fact, come on, Zacchaeus, I'd like you to go around the back of the house and meet him. He said, no, thanks, man. I'll stay around this side of the Dead men around there cutting wood. I'm just there right here. But Zachary said, you mean? He said, yes. I don't know if you've heard about it or not. But that was a man called Jesus. <laughs> that shortly after your deputy came, and he didn't want to interrupt the funeral, he came and had the boldness to stand right in the path where the funeral was going to the graveyard. And said, that stranger stood there and block the funeral procession. And I thought to my soul, I thought, what is he doing? The nerve of him to stop a funeral procession. I've got heartache enough without somebody trying to 
be smart, but he looked so kind and he looked so compassionate until I decided I wouldn't say anything and just wait and see what his motivation was. And said he just calmly walked over to the casket and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, arise. Yeah. And she said, Zacchaeus, my boy flipped his lid. <laughs> <laughs> that coffin yeah. lid <laughs> said it popped off. Amen. Just like popcorn out of a pot. And said, My boy, sit up and said, how y'all doing? <laughs> Thanks for coming to the funeral. You really impressed me. Better have a lot of friends. I hope y'all doing good as I am. Woo, it's a beautiful day in it. Said my boy sat up and said he went over and gently just sort of sort of helped me out and said, You've been in that old cramped up box long enough, boy. Let me get you out of here on your feet. Let, let, let you walk around a bit. Let these people see just how well you really are. She said, Zacchaeus, I enjoy having my son as I've never known him. For he knows Jesus, I know Jesus, and he knows perfect health now. Amen! Amen. Amen. Zacchaeus said, I never heard such stories as I'm hearing about this Jesus fella. But uh, I tell you what, if you'll just sign right here, if you don't have the tax money, I've got the forms right here you can sign. And, and we can just get on with the business. She said, I've got the tax money. Everybody buys wood from my son just to help us to get caught up on our desk. And said, he sold more firewood. A lot of people have fireplaces right here. He sold more firewood than anybody in this county. Because he can cook faster than anybody else. You never know what a dead man can do when he comes alive with you. <laughs> <laughs> so Zacchaeus said, oh, I hope to get a house, but I didn't. Well, let me go see here what's going on over there in Mr. Edwards' house. I'll uh, go over here and see about them uh, them kids with a crazy daddy. And so uh, he's up in the graveyard. He's got a notation here. And, and the kids are scared to death of him. And, and the widow or, or the uh, uh, woman that's separated from her husband. I don't know what I'm going to get entangled with. So he goes up and he knocks on the door. And a man comes to the door. And he said, oh, I see. When the cat's away, the mice do play. And he said, what does that mean? Oh, he said, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. I just thinking that uh, I had a deputy come by here, and he told me about the man that used to live here, don't live here anymore. So I said, another man come to the door. I just saw figure two and two makes four, usually, you know. And, uh, he said, but really what I was doing was looking to see if uh, Mrs. Edwards might be here. The man said, no, if Mrs. Edwards here, I'm Mr. Edwards, I'm here. He said, oh, I didn't say nothing, I didn't say nothing. Don't get riled up now. I understand you've got a little, little bit of emotional problems and all. I, I didn't mean nothing with that. He said, I understand. I've gone through this a few times with people who are stupid and ignorant and all that. But he said, uh, who are you? He said, I'm Zacchaeus from the tax department. I just thought I'd come by here and let you sign over the house to me if, if there was no way to pay the taxes. And since Mr. Edwards was an insane man, wild and up in the graveyard and all like that, the man wrote, said, I, uh, I just didn't expect to see a man here. And about that time, the little kids come up and said, Daddy, Daddy, we're so glad you're home. And he said, I want to reaffirm, children, you got a brand new daddy now. You'll never have me like I was when I left home. Amen. And Zacchaeus said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, Jesus passed by. Amen. Yeah. And many did cry till Jesus passed by. But he said, when Jesus passed by, yeah. he came through my graveyard. Right. And he came where I was. And said, boy, did them devils begin to go to one another and say, I ain't going to leave. Well, I ain't going to stay. Well, I... And said, them devils begin to have turmoil inside of me. And he said, I could feel the wrestling of all those evil spirits in my bosom when Jesus showed up. And, and yet I just knew that it wasn't comfortable for me. I just knew if I could get Jesus help, I could have help from all this said so all of a sudden he said come out of him unclean spirit and a voice said we're many we're many 
and they began to talk back and forth as I was then a victim of these devils and said, they said, please, it's before our time. Don't cast us out into the deep. And Jesus said, uh, well, what would you have me do? And there was a herd of a bunch of pigs, many swine in that area. And they said, well, let us go into the pigs. We need a body to indwell if we're going to do our devil bit. And if you're going to cast us out of this man, we're going to have bodies. And said, all those devils that were in me went and infested a whole herd of swine. And the pig squealed out, what have we done to deserve this? <laughs> they said, we'd rather commit homicide than to have a bunch of devils in us. Yeah. And so, being pigs, they committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> and went out and drowned themselves. You've never seen so many baptized devils in your life going under that water. <coughs> But he said, Jesus set me in my right mind and told me to go home and tell what great things he had done for me. Amen. He said, yeah. Zacchaeus, I've got your money, but I wasn't going to let you get away till I testified what Jesus did for me. Amen. Zacchaeus said, I'm telling you, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I hear about this Jesus fella. But I'm going to get me a house yet. I'm going to Miss Jones where they were starving to death. And I may have to sweep out the bones of them starved people. But I'll have a house when I do. So he goes to Mrs. Jones' house. And as he gets there, starts to go into the yard. He sees <coughs> some fat, roly-poly little kids. I mean, they're boys, much like Kids will when they eat. <laughs> <laughs> I said, kids. <laughs> and that's what they were. And they said, Mister, we so glad you showed up. He said, I wonder where the family is that used to live here, kids. Do you know where the Joneses are? We're the Jones boys and we're the Jones kids. He said, well, I have a report here that they weren't in the condition you're in. Said, is your mama here? Said, yes, she's inside. Mama! And he stood there and watched as all the light that was going into the front door began to be blocked out by a woman that came and stood and her body just filled up the door frame totally. And he started to say, Mrs. Megaton? <laughs> But he thought, I better call Miss Jones. Mrs. Jones? Yeah, all 316 pounds of her. Why? What you got on your mind? She said, well, I just didn't know that anything like this could take place around here. She said, well, you must have not heard about Jesus. What do you mean? She said, well, that deputy came by. You were in the tax department. I see your papers and your credentials and your uniform. But she said, that deputy came by and he saw the condition we was in. And I tried to feed him something. We didn't have nothing but dead roaches laying around on the floor and said he wouldn't eat them. So well, we, we just said, we was all starving to death, but said, a neighbor brought us just a little bit to eat and said, actually, after we all ate a little bit, there were just uh, five little pieces of bread and a couple of little fish. And so I realized that would be the last meal we'd ever eat unless God worked a miracle. So I tell, told my oldest boy, 12 years old he was, I said, son, we got no way to make money. We got no way to get money. We got no way. We're going to lose our house. We're going to lose our health. We're going to die. If you don't do one thing that a little boy might be able to do, I'm going to pack your little lot, son. I want you to take this lot downtown. See if you can get a job down there sweeping out a store or maybe, maybe a shining shoes or cleaning sandals or whatever little boys might get to do. And said, son, if you can get a job and earn a little money and bring it back and we can buy a few groceries, we might be able to survive a little longer. But son, if you can't find a job, you've got the last food in this house. You just eat it and die full while we die hungry here at the house. He said, yes, mama, if I'm there. She said, I want you to do that because I don't want you to die hungry. And I'm depending on you to get a job somewhere. She said, Zachary, 
My little boy, you know little boys, they have a short memory span. Said he went to town and he forgot what he went for when he saw that great big crowd listening to a man teach. Marvelous teaching. Yeah. Said he got so enthralled at what was being taught and told until he decided he'd follow that man and listen to some more of them good stories. And said he followed him and followed the crowd and went way out into a desert place. And it was getting late and he hadn't even looked for a job. And he hadn't even thought to eat. He was so full of the joy of all the man was telling him. And said, finally, that man said to his followers, some of the close ones, he said, men, time to eat. And it's time to see that all these people get fed. They said, Master, there's not a McDonald's or Burger King or Hardee's or anything anywhere close around here. He said, we don't need that. Just feed them what we got. They said, sir, there's nothing here. I mean, 200 pennyworth wouldn't be enough. There's, not enough. there's no way we can feed all this crowd. There's just hundreds. And he said, you mean there's nothing here? She said, my little boy remembered under his belt with a little paper sack with some fish in the head. And he said, mister, I got a little sack of food and you can have him give it to whoever you want to. Yeah. I'm so full of hearing your stories till I don't want nothing else to eat. I just want to hear some more of your talk. And said, yeah. that man said, well, I'll take it. That ought to be enough for this crowd. Said, my little boy's eyes got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as he reached the end. He said, now, have everybody sit down in front of the 50. We're going to have a Sunday school picnic and everybody's going to participate. It's going to be plenty for all. And said he began to reach in that little sack and Put some fish and bread and said, go yeah. get it to him. Amen. Come down the lines and just pass it out and come back in more. Said he reached in that sack and said, an hour later, he was still reaching in, pulling out. And that little boy said, Mama, you packed a big lunch for me today. <laughs> oh, did it ever feed a crowd. But said they fed and they fed and they fed until finally, everybody was just bulging and burping and and they said, Master, they're all full. He said, full? Yeah, listen. <laughs> they weren't burping on, on key where you could enjoy it, but they were, whoo, you could smell sweet fish in the air all over the place as they were exhausting their pipes. But the truth is, that little boy was not that much feed at all and said, when they all had all they wanted, they started to say, okay, Master, we're ready to go. He said, no, we're not. He said, I'm the Lord God that wrote the Bible many times. I tell you that it's a sin to be wasteful. And we're not going to waste here. No, 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 no. I want you to gather up. Anybody got any leftover? Yeah, I got some here. I got some here. He said, you gather up all the fragments, all the leftovers, and put them in these baskets. And my little boy watched as they brought 12 baskets of fish and bread. And the disciples said, here they are, Master, all the leftovers. Everybody released it because they're full. They want no more. He said, here it is. What shall we do with it? He said, well, where did he come from? They said, well, that little boy. He said, okay, freely he has given, freely he shall receive. You strong men take those 12 baskets from that little boy and take it down to his home. Where it comes from? Where'd you get it, son? Mama. Okay, take it to his mama. She said, Satchis, them men come here with 12 baskets full of fish and bread. And they set it down in the hallway. And my kids and I, we begin to eat. And you talk about good hot fish sandwiches. They were still just the perfect temperature and perfect taste and perfect Perfect, perfect for an idea that I had. And I said, son, I tell you what I believe I want you to do. I want you to go get me one of them hot fish sandwiches and let me wrap it up. He went and picked it up and said, when he did, he said, Mama! What, son, what? I just picked up one and another one popped in its place. <laughs> said he forgot to take the multiplier off. <laughs> it's still multiplied. He said, take this one, take this one, take this one. And it's 
she said, Zacchaeus, those hot fish sandwiches begin to multiply. I got a magic marker. I printed a sign, hot fish sandwiches, 15 cents. Stuck it out on the corner of the yard and said people have been making a beeline to get here because they never tasted such good fish, fillet, and bread. And they said, boy, this tastes like heavenly manna. Never eat manna, but this sure am good. And said, we've been sending hot fish sandwiches till we got all the money to pay the tax bill. Hey. <laughs> and Zacchaeus said, don't tell me. Jesus passed by. Yeah, yeah. You figured it out, didn't you, Zacchaeus? Amen. And said, Zacchaeus, you don't get a house this time because we got all the money needed. And uh, he said, well, you folks take care of yourself. Diabetes is running all over this country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're just a little overweight there. But let me hurry up and get through here. He said, I got one more stop to make. And that's for Mr. Price. Oh, the old blind man don't lose his little cottage his daddy left to him in his will. But he goes, have you done guessed it? Quit getting ahead of me. Will you just, just wait on me, wait on me. <laughs> but he went. And he went down to Jericho. And he uh, went down to the gate of Jericho where he heard that Mr. Price was shaking that little tin cup. And he went and he saw a worn, bare spot where the grass was worn out and even the gravels were worn out. Where somebody looked like they'd been sitting there and, and day after day after day and just wore a spot out in the grass where he sat there with the park. And he said to a fellow, said, hey, you know who sits here? And the man looked and said, I don't know what's wrong with you, Mr. Pertain, nobody's sitting there. He said, I don't mean now. I mean, who is it sits here so much as wore it out? He said, oh, you mean the man who used to sit here? He said, you mean Mr. Price? He said, that's it, Mr. Price. He said, oh, he, he had to sit there in several days now. He's, uh, he's got a little home just inside, outside the, the gate here. If you just go over there and he gave you directions. He said, you'll find him there. So we went up to Mr. Price's house and, uh, he knocked on the door, and Mr. Price came to the door. And uh, Zacchaeus said, how you doing, sir? He said, I'm doing fine, but I don't believe I've ever seen you before. And Zacchaeus said, hardy, hard, hard. You blind people are really full of jokes, aren't you? <laughs> Certainly you've never seen me before, because you gave me. He said, well, I can tell you got a little chip there on one of your teeth. <laughs> he said, you can see. He said, see, better you can. That's why they hired me down to Jericho Gazette, proofreading the fine print in the newspaper. <laughs> the, other men, the other men can't read. <laughs> and he said, you mean, you mean you see that good? He said, oh, you'd be surprised how good I see, and I see what you're here for. I, I, I see that, that uh, paper you got there. You want to get my house, aren't you? Well, you ain't going to get it. Because my work has paid off so good and I got some advance uh, pay until I can pay off the tax debt. Zacchaeus! I got the money here, but you're not going to get a dime of it, not a penny of it, not any of it. Did you let me tell you Amen. how did that man throw a rock on my porch? I mean, he came by my tin cup and put it in nickel in my cup. I went, when my eyes were healed, I looked and wasn't but a nickel in that. I know what he put in now. Mm -hmm. Dirty, stingy. Well, anyhow, said, and said, after he passed, I heard a commotion. A big crowd coming. And I said, what is this? And somebody said, hey, Mr. Blind Man, you earned your living shaking that tin cup. You got to change now. There's at least 500 people coming along this way. And if you just Hold that cup out and shake it, man. People can put money in. You get a big gathering of money today. And he thought, it's not money I need. Amen. I need something besides money. Amen. Amen. And so he said, when I heard that crowd coming, said, I held that tin cup out, but I did so not to get something, but hoping I could trip somebody. And said, sure enough, somebody stumbled. I was sitting down, and somebody stumbled over my arm and said, hey, what are you before. He said, because I've got to find out what is going on with all this crowd. He said, Jesus passing by. He said, Jesus. Oh, 
Yeah, I've heard about him. And so he said, I begin to cry. Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me! Somebody yeah. said, hey, hey, shh, shh. Everybody here is not Baptist. We don't holler and shout. Yeah, right. He said, I cried so much the louder. Jesus! Have mercy on me! And they said, hush, hush, hush. <coughs> He's working with people that need him. He said, I need him. Right. Yeah. He said, I cried so much the louder until finally he came and he said, what shall I do for thee? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. He said, thy faith has saved thee. Receive thy sight. And he said, you know, a lot of people have seen Oreos and uh, goldfinches and beautiful leaves in the autumn and the fall and beautiful scenery and beautiful lakes. He said, the first thing I ever seen in my life was the face of Jesus. Yeah. He said, there's yeah. nothing to compare. Yeah. He said, now that I've seen a lot of other things, I keep going back and say, but I've seen Jesus, and that's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I said, Zacchaeus, he restored my sight, and I've got a job, and I just had to testify before I paid you. Zacchaeus, yeah. you don't get my house because Jesus passed by. Yeah. Zacchaeus had heard enough. In fact, that happened in chapter 18. And chapter 19 opens as Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, yes, sir. where that blind man had been healed. He came there to Jericho, and look at it again there in chapter 19, if you will. It says, in verse 3, <coughs> And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because Zacchaeus, he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass that way. Yeah. And when Jesus came to the place and looked up and saw him, he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for the lamb is about thy house. And he made haste, came down, received him joyfully, when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man this sinner. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. If I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day of salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost? Was lost. Amen. Now when he came and wanted to see Jesus, but had too much pride to just mill through the crowd till he got to him, he had so much pride there in a good suit and having an office of being chief among the publicans, he said, I don't want to see him. I don't want to be exposed as being a fanatic following him, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I know where this path where he's coming leads. I'm going to go way down yonder and get me some time to climb up a tree. And he found a sycamore tree where the limbs were pretty close and he climbed it and went on up, on up, on up in that sycamore tree. And he got up there and he found some limbs and leaves and some branches and he pulled it around himself with a peephole where he could look down from the top of the tree, just want to see Jesus, who he was. Here comes the crowd. And here they come. Here they come. And Zacchaeus says, I can't even breathe now. He will he to discover me up here. I can see it in the headline of the Jericho Gazette. Zacchaeus <laughs> up a tree in his best suit, sitting up there looking down at Jesus. He said, I don't want to be exposed, but i got to see this man who raises the dead and heals the blind and heals the leper and feeds the hungry. This is something to see. So there he is, thinking he was secure, hiding from Jesus. <laughs> Don't you ever try it. You can't hide from Jesus. Amen. He stopped right under the tree. 
There are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose even the world itself could not contain the book that should be written. Amen. Amen. Now I don't declare to you that's the way it happened. But you can't declare to me it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a much right to believe it did. You have to believe it didn't. But I'll tell you what I do believe and I'll tell you. The truth is witnessing wins souls. Amen. And what chapter 19 of Luke says, Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus, yeah. who he was, yeah. and he didn't get that information off of his documents in the tax department. Right. Mm -hmm. He had circulated through the area enough to get some testimonies from people yes, like you. Amen. And you never know what your testimony of Jesus passing by your life can do to lay weight of conviction and convincing on a sinner that will never see Jesus if he doesn't see it in you. Amen. Amen. So I declare unto you that witnessing wins souls. So I bring this message with a lot of involvement of others that might have been involved in such a manner that you might get the picture in your mind that silence wins nobody. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. In other words, this business of being just a silent disciple, you're not going to have anybody beat a path to your door and climb a tree to find out who your Jesus is. That's, That's right. right. Are you listening? Witnessing. Then I bring it for a second reason. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Every one of these, when Jesus came by, they were never the same again. Amen. Amen. That's what happened to her only here. That's the reason I'm standing here tonight. When Jesus passed by, with all my ambitions and desires as a young boy full of the world and want more of it, I've never been the same. Amen. Amen. And then the third reason I bring this message is because in this very room, there's somebody here with a financial problem. Jesus is your answer. Somebody with a mental problem. Jesus is the answer. A physical problem, an emotional problem, a domestic problem, a spiritual problem. Listen, whatever your problem is revealed in the Scriptures, Jesus never did come on a man or a woman with a problem and say, Ooh, that one is beyond my pay grade. <laughs> I can't handle that. No. In other words, whatever problem you've got, if you've got Jesus, you've got enough Amen. to walk in victory. Amen. And look back and thank you, God, for deliverance. Amen. Amen. Your problem. I didn't say you can specify exactly when. But you can expect Jesus to be as good as his word on every problem that he's represented himself to have a year. Amen. 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 Well, I've got to go tie my horse, so I'll turn back over to you.